Hello and welcome to the second day of our special coverage of the parliamentary hearings for the new European Commission. It's Super Tuesday in the Parliament, with six hearings all taking place on the same day, covering policy areas from audit to international trade. Three of the Commissioner's designate are old hands coming back, and three are new faces. One of those coming back is Carol de Gucht. He is the former Belgian Foreign Minister who took over from Louis Michel as Development Commissioner last year. Arnaud de Molder reports. If he manages to convince MEPs, Carol de Gucht will leave his post as Development Commissioner for international trade. To secure this key EU portfolio, Carol de Gucht must reiterate his total commitment to free trade. His priority is to handle the Doha round well on a complete liberalisation of global trade. The negotiations have been on ice since 2001. Why do you think the Doha negotiations failed? Because there are still some basic uh, differences of uh, opinion on some topics, most uh, notably uh, uh, agriculture. This hearing is of particular importance. Since the Lisbon Treaty came into effect, MEPs have played a decisive role in trade issues. Faced with the worries of several MEPs caused by rising unemployment in Europe, Karl de Gucht defended his vision of an economy based on trade growth. You said that the aim of international trade was growth and jobs that respect social rights? As soon as trade holds, you get into very difficult economic problems as well. So we cannot conceive the world economy without trade. Despite the failure of the Copenhagen Climate Summit, Karl de Gucht said he was opposed to the creation of a carbon tax for countries outside the EU, championed by France especially. The tax is supposed to protect European industries against countries that are lax with their greenhouse gas emissions. However, he believes it would lead to an uncontrollable trade war. Now, Jim Gibbons is poised outside one of the committee rooms where the hearings have been taking place. Jim, Commissioner de Gucht is moving from development to trade. How did it go for him? Well, indeed, there were a number of questions related to the links between development and trade, as well as raising issues about the Far East, for instance, South America, Russia, and workers' rights. Mr. de Gucht, do you feel that your new portfolio of, of trade will give you the chance to fulfill some of the ambitions you've had as development commissioner? Uh, certainly because um, I truly believe that if you want to have development uh, um, in, in the developing countries, in the least developing countries also, you will need trade. And uh, we have to frame this. I mean, we already made a, a, a tremendous effort as European Union, for example, with everything but arms, which means that people uh, and businesses from developing countries, least developing countries, can import freely on the European market. And what we want to do is to universalize this within the dual arms. There's a lot of talk as well about Korea, a lot of questions raised about the trade deal negotiated by um, Catherine Ashton, for instance. You don't see Korea as the big problem in terms of the EU's relations with particularly Asia. First of all, I, uh, I, I don't see uh, the relation of, of European Union with Asia as a problematic one. Uh, but um, I believe that, that, that the, the deal that has... Uh, uh, been made by Cathy Ashton is a good one. Of course, it will be thoroughly discussed. It's also normal, quite normal, because this will be the first uh, uh, free trade agreement that uh, uh, will have to be agreed uh, by the European Parliament uh, through the uh, assent procedure. And it's normal that you will have a discussion on that. Uh, that's uh, what the procedure is about. But I will, uh, yes, I will defend it. And I'm, I'm convinced that this is a, a very balanced deal, yes. Mr. De Gaulle, thank you very much thank indeed. You. Thank you very much, Mark. Back to you in the studio. Thank you, Jim. As we said earlier, no fewer than six parliamentary hearings are taking place today. Hugh Gwanstock now takes a look at the other five. Five other would-be commissioners were also in the hot seat. Algirda Semeta, Lithuania's former finance minister, was quizzed on tax, combating fraud and the custom union. Three portfolios in one. The hearing went without any notable clashes. She's not talking about the level of the taxes. And I think the citizens, they are most interested in the levels. Uh, we should have in mind uh, issues which you mentioned about the crisis situation and uh, the need to deal with the, with the debt. When it comes to hearings, Luxembourg's Vivian Redding is an old hand. This is her third time before MEPs. She's hoping to land a new post of Commissioner for Justice, Fundamental Rights and Citizenship. Most MEPs recognize her solid credentials. 
fundamental rights are applied in all our new proposals. If the Czech Stefan Füle is approved, he will be in charge of enlargement and relations with the EU neighbours. MEPs aren't short of hot political potatoes like Turkey's membership and relations with Russia. The candidate will have to measure his words. You have shown your will to press ahead with the enlargement process. Now, the candidate countries have duties, um, obligations incumbent upon them, but so does the European Union. Now, I would like to ask you what sort of political initiative you intend to take. We don't have a better uh, form of relationship to help Turkey to modernize uh, uh, its uh, state than uh, the accession. Spain's Joachim Almunia hopes to back a key post in the Barroso II Commission, namely the head of competition. The Bulgarian Rumiana Yeleva hopes to lead international cooperation, humanitarian aid and crisis management. Her hearing is keenly awaited. The fate of all the candidates will be sealed come the end of January. After the hearings, the MEPs involved meet together to reflect on what they've heard. And the word is that all the commissioners designate were felt to have passed the test yesterday. Although today, the socialists have been highly critical of anti-fraud commissioner designate Algirda Shemata. Much attention had been focused on Janusz Lewandowski, the new budget commissioner. So I asked EPP member Alan Lamassour how he felt that hearing had gone. Alain Lamassour, you were present yesterday at one of the first hearings, that of Commissioner-designate Lewandowski. How do you think it went? It was uh, special because uh, we all knew Mr. Lewandowski, who, who, who is one of my predecessors as the chairman of the Budgets Committee. Uh, but uh, we uh, uh, realized that it's quite an examination. Uh, three uh, hours... Uh, discussions uh, uh, with uh, more than uh, 30 members uh, able uh, to put questions. Uh, it was very hard. Now, afterwards, of course, the members of the committee get together to consider what they've heard. What was the feeling in those deliberations? Well, clearly, uh, everybody uh, agreed uh, on the fact that uh, the man is uh, competent, uh, is experienced, he knows uh, not only the substance of the issues, but also uh, the parliament uh, is an insider in the, in the parliament. Uh, there was a, a kind of political cleavage between the right and, and the left. Monsieur Lamassour, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Another big name up for reselection today is Vivian Redding, the commissioner from Luxembourg, who held the Information Society portfolio. She's moving to the new DG for Justice, Fundamental Rights and Citizenship. Andreas Rogel has that story. Over to you, Andreas. Mark, yes, that's right. One thing you uh, couldn't accuse Vivian Redding of is a lack of experience. But, however, she has no uh, background in uh, legal affairs. She's a journalist by trade. So is she really up to this new portfolio, which deals, of course, with a lot of very tricky and uh, delicate questions, legal, international and uh, cross-border questions? I have here with me now the president of the Legal Affairs Committee of the European Parliament, who has just uh, presided over the hearing, or part of the hearing, with uh, Commissioner Redding. And uh, I'm going to ask him now, uh, what do you think? Is she up to the job? Yes, I think she's prepared for the job. You know, she was for 10 years member of this house in the Home Affairs Committee, and she's now for 10 years commissioner. And if you are doing such, such a job for 10, and then another 10 years, I think you know something about law. You are something like an honorable lawyer or something like that, even if you have not studied law. And I think she proved today in her presentation that she really is fit on, the, on those issues, and I'm very happy with the result of the hearing. What are going to be here her big priorities for her, but also for you? I think for me, one of the most important things was that she clearly supported the idea of the further development of the common frame of reference. You know, we are trying to develop a kind of common European contract law that at the end may be a kind of model for the development of the civil law within Europe and that as well could, uh, you could be used at the end for a kind of 29th regime for cross-border dealings, for cross-border businesses. And I personally believe that this would be a big step forward. And she was standing behind this project. For me, this is one of the most important points. Another important point, I believe, is that she clearly said that regarding the aspects of collective redress, 
she is in favor of a strong horizontal approach that means not splitting up the legal systems in the member states but having one common approach within the European Union and avoiding the negative effects of the American system on this issue and I believe this is another very important point. Thank you very much Klaus Annalena. Back to you Mark. Thanks Andreas. And finally to Commissioner-designate Romiana Zeleva from Bulgaria. Many observers have been expecting her hearing today to include questions about her husband's business associates. But what do we know about Madame Zeleva herself? In a recent interview, Romiana Zeleva said that she wasn't born a politician and probably wouldn't want to die one. The nonchalant phrase belies a fierce ambition on the part of Bulgaria's choice for the next commission. A sociologist by training with a distinguished academic and business background, the 40-year-old embarked on a remarkable career once she joined politics barely four years ago. Her first stop was the European Parliament, coming with the first batch of Bulgarian MEPs as the head of her country's EPP delegation. She was subsequently also elected vice president of the group. When her party won the general election back home last year, she was promptly elevated to a top job and became Bulgaria's foreign affairs minister. But she wasn't to stay for any length of time, having then been nominated commissioner-designate just a few months later. Rumiana Yaleva has admitted that her dream portfolio would have been the EU's neighbourhood policy. But international cooperation, humanitarian aid and crisis response is, if not quite as influential, still in the same area with the brief of working closely together in the planned foreign affairs cluster with her colleagues Cathy Ashton, Andreas Peelbags and Stefan Fuhl. That hearing is still going on and we'll bring you more as we get it. In the meantime, that's all for now.